Hi everyone, I'm Dave Darlington. We're here at my home studio today and I want to tell you about a newly redesigned version of Studio Rack, the Waves Plug-in Chainer. It's been completely redesigned from the ground up with a new graphic interface and some new modules that turn it into a virtual playground, a plug-in toolkit that lets you create, construct, and save your own custom plugins. Another great thing about it is it helps you think of your mix in terms of plug-in chains and that's how the real high-end engineers think. You're not just doing individual processes, you're thinking globally in terms of processing chains. So you keep your chains, you save them, and then they're ready to use on your next mix. So I'll give you a tour of the graphic interface, and then I'll reverse engineer a plug-in chain of my own and describe what I was thinking when I put it together. So here's the new interface, and I know right about now you're asking yourself, what exactly is a plug-in chainer and why do I need it? There's a number of good reasons. First of all, you have eight slots where you can install Waves plugins, and then you can save that as one single plugin. So A, that gives your mix a more elegant and contained feel. You're not distracted by the uh, small details of your processing. And number two, you can save it as a preset and pull it up whenever you want. So I have a mastering chain, I have a vocal chain, maybe a drum room chain, that kind of thing. And these become part of your arsenal that you can call up at any time. You can see here we have an input uh, level and a phase reverse and then an output meter and level and a gain reduction meter. Pretty easy to understand. So let's freestyle a little bit. Let's say you have some audio that you want to process. What's the first thing you might do? You might want to EQ it. So you click here on the bar and up comes this menu with the usual types of things like delay and EQ. And if you want to look for something specific, you simply type in the name here. It's got a search function. And I'll throw in a Shep's EQ. And then after I EQ it, perhaps I might want to compress it. So we'll go to CLA 2A. And uh, then what I might want to do is install one of these new bands that we haven't really seen before today. So how about a multiband split where I can do different things to different parts of the frequency spectrum? You can see as soon as I click on multiband, it opens up another window here with two more chains and I can add chains here with this little plus or subtract them. So I can create as many bands as I want and process each band separately. That opens up a really wide range of possibilities. What if you want to put a little compression just on the low mids? Or what if you want to put a little distortion on the highs to give it like a little blown speaker vibe or something like that? What if you want to turn CLA-2A into a multiband compressor? What if you want a multiband 1176? You can just kind of let your imagination run wild and uh, you can control the crossover frequencies here, much like any other um, multiband plugin. Now, the really interesting thing, and I didn't discover this until I fooled around with the plugin for a little while, is that these multiband splits and also the parallel splits have not only panning at the bottom, but you see this is a little bit of a complex panorama controller and what it really is it's an s1 the waves imaging plugin built into each band so we can pan right and left as we're used to and we do it all the time on faders but here we have a width control so we can be actually wider outside of the stereo image or more narrow or in fact and we can even reverse it i'm just holding that little w and moving my mouse like that and then once you have the width that you so desire you can even tilt the width just like the tilt like the tilt control in the s1 and you can solo the bands to see what you're doing like that so let's just for pretend sake i'm going to put a manny distortion on just the highs there we go now another thing i want to point out is that you can see that all the windows remain floating, which is really helpful while you're working on the plug-in chain itself. You can see each thing, and if you click on it again, it, it disappears for you. So that's really helpful when you're working on multiple processing at once, and you can see everything. Okay, so after the multiband, perhaps we want to crush it with an Arvox, really clobber it. Then maybe we want to add some effects, but we also want to keep the main signal. How would we do that? Well. There's another module called Parallel. Same thing, we have five bands, but this first band is letting the main sound come through. So what would we do with the other band? Well, we might want to do a hall. We might want to do a plate. We might want to do a delay and perhaps a chorus. My old friend Metaphalanger, which I love to this day and put my chorus 
preset. Now, these volumes here on the various parallel faders is just like when you're returning auxes on a console. You have your main sound on band one on the left over there, and then you can add as much reverb as you like. Then, as in the multiband, this whole thing is summed back to the main chainer. So then we can do other things like vocal rider. Let's use artificial intelligence to control our level. How cool is that? We have this third new addition, which this takes a little concentration to wrap your head around it. I didn't really understand it myself until I first started digging into it. And then suddenly the light went on and I realized, wow, I can do things here in the plugin that I can't even do in the DAW itself. Let me show you how it works. So these are called macros and we have eight of them. So what you do is you assign your macro to different things. Let's say I'm going to assign it to the ships high. And I'm also going to assign it to the Arvox amount of compression. And I'm also going to assign it to the CLA output. I'm not really engineering right now. I'm just demonstrating how the macros work. Now, when I turn this knob, you can see three things moving at the same time. That's pretty cool, right? So you can, of course, automate this in your DAW. And maybe at some point in the song, you want a super treble burst and a super volume gain, or just as an example. It's like a matrix. The possibilities are realistically endless. You can connect any kinds of things to any other kinds of things. You can edit them. There's an edit window that shows you what you've connected. You see, I've got the Sheps high gain and I have the CLA gain and the Arbox compression now. And you also have an assignment window here, which makes them all flash. So when they're flashing, you just hit the one you want to assign something to and then hit the parameter. And now that parameter is assigned. So you can, you can do it that way, or you can right click and get this pull down menu and it shows everything. So collapse everything. And we have a rock song here with quite a bit of stuff, drums, rooms, guitars, bass, keyboards, a bunch of vocals. But if you look at my mix window, it's very elegant and you only see one or two instantations of plugins because I'm using Studio Rack to group everything together. The other great thing is that because it's a Waves plugin, it can migrate from DAW to DAW. So I'm in Pro Tools right now. And let's just save that one I just made. Let's save it as, put into preset menu as Jet Fuel. Now we go over here to Logic and I can load should be at the bottom, Jet Fuel. Jet Fuel came right up in Logic. It'll come up in Ableton or all the different uh, DAWs. Okay, so here's the vocal chain that I created and based on some things that I might need to do in vocals so I can save it as a Studio Rack preset and then whenever I need it, I just pull up DD Vocals and here's all the stuff that I might do. It's meaningless to try And there's something in my eye Get it out or I will die Again the pain If I try with all my might I'll have visions not just sight I'm befriending with the night Again the shame I feel as though my world let's have a look what's going on here in the chain these days the first thing you need to do is tune vocals even if you're just doing it very gently not too aggressively it doesn't hurt and of course you can always just mute the plug in right there this is the on and off button then I would EQ then I would compress my favorite the CLA-2A it's the go-to vocal compressor for me but you can put in whatever you like so we're tuning EQ and compressing right there in one shot we have the three things that you almost always do to vocals these days. So you save it and it's your template right there, your Studio Rack template. Now it gets a little more interesting. Here's a multiband split. Just to demonstrate some multiband compression, I'm compressing a little bit more in the lower mids because I find that's what makes vocals hard to cut through, especially a powerful rock tune. If there's too much mud and mid in the bottom, it, it tends to get a uh, smeared in with the guitars and the, and the tom-toms and the upper bass. But so what you can do is just compress a little bit of that out, very much like a C4. 
But this way I have really complete control over it in, the, in a comfortable compressor, the R compressor. I might do the same thing with the shrill parts of the upper mids, although here you see I have it on zero as a starting point because I don't necessarily want to do that, but I could tweak that down like that. And the upper I'll handle with something else, a, a de -esser. and the lower, that depends on the program. But there I have my four bands just ready to go, and I don't have to use it. I can turn it off if I want, but right now it's on. Next, I added sibilance, my favorite go-to de -esser. It's pretty much on any vocal that I do. Then after sibilance, I use Arvox to really crush it, and I have this um, assigned to a macro like I showed you earlier in the program. And then why not use a little artificial intelligence thanks to the Waves engineers to help us control our levels going out of the whole plugin. So you see pretty easily I've covered all my bases, and if I just pull up my preset, it's, it takes the work of you know literally hundreds of clicks and settings and, and designs, and I can save it and use it in the other um, softwares that I might be asked to mix in. Let's take a look at my, my macros, and we can look at the um, editor and see what they're doing. So the first one I called Clarity, and I showed you that at the beginning of the video. That's just mostly the SSL channel, boosting treble if I want more brightness. So you have really a lot of control over the parameters. The warmth knob I have assigned to the SSL low frequency. From removing it, when I'm all the way down on warmth, you see the low frequency of the SSL go into the minus, or I can boost it with that very simple macro. But of course, this can be automated. What if the verse is shrill and the chorus is boomy? You can just run it through the same thing and just automate one of your macros down. I should mention at this time, you can name it by double clicking at the top, like uh, super clear. That's how you name the macros to remember what they are. So the number three is radio. And that's controlling the filters on the SSL. You see that there, I'm, I'm rolling off lows. It doesn't move on the high end until I get halfway, and then it starts to roll down the high end and give us the megaphone effect. And the way I did that, this is the throw of the knob. So the throw, it doesn't start until it hits um, the 340 mark, somewhere around there. And then these are the limits of the parameters in the plugin itself, and you can dial those in. Punch is going to be the R box, so let's get that up. Echo is attached to the rack outputs. The parallel split, you see the echo moving there, which is my H delay. And uh, thinking again, like a big time engineer, you want to maybe have the delay go into a little reverb so it's not just coming back dry. The slap is more like a little rock and roll slap. That's just a very short H delay, 150 milliseconds, you know, a rockabilly kind of a slap. Reverb over here, our Arby Road plates, not too long, not too short. And the doubler level here, which is my favorite ADT. I live by this. I have it on just about every vocal that's come out since this plugin dropped. And after the ADT, we have a little filtering so let me just reload, since I've been moving things around, I'm just going to reload uh, DD vocals. You can see here on my list, I've saved all the stuff for this song in case I wanted to go back to it and tweak it. The cool thing about this load and save thing, if you command click when you load, you can delete things from your list. So you can save everything that you've done. I'll have a template that will just open up whenever you need it in any software that you need. All kinds of combinations, only limited by your own imagination. And here's the best part. It's free. So you just add it to your arsenal and start building your own signature plugins and saving them. And um, have a ball.